So what we're going to do now is make our hydraulic top link. We've got a hydraulic cylinder here that we got at Princess Auto, and we're just going to cut the ends off it and put these on. These are top link ends. And voila, we'll have a hydraulic top link. So, uh, we're going to go ahead, uh, cut that tube off, and we have to cut the shaft there. And then we'll weld our ends on, and this will be good, good, good. We got this all prepared, ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and weld the first end on. I'll just tack it in one spot, and then we'll make sure it's straight and level and everything like that, and then we'll go ahead and weld it around. Well, I got it welded as straight as I could. Um, looks pretty darn good. So uh, we're just going to pull the mechanical one off. And we'll see about getting this one installed and the hydraulic lines put on it. And see how it works. Got fittings in. Now we're going to build up the hoses. Um, at some point in the future, I wouldn't mind putting a, a double pilot operated check valve on this. But for now, I'm shy some fittings to do it. And... I'm going to see how this works like this. It might be okay for what I'm doing. I'm building up the hydraulic hoses now. These are 3 8 ends and these Pioneer couplers are half pipe. So we need a, a 3 8 by half bushing in the middle. Everything is steel. So we put a couple of rounds of Teflon tape on it and just wind them down till they're good and tight and that'll do it. I'll put the other one together now. Now we can put the hoses onto the cylinder. We've got a long one and a short one. Got them tightened up. Now we can go put the cylinder on the tractor. That's pretty snazzy, I have to say. Pretty darn good. So what we'll do now, we'll, uh, we'll start the tractor up. I'll lift up the blade, and then I'll make sure the, um, the top link works without leaks, etc. I'll try the top link. And I think I might change the quarter inch hoses. These three inch hoses, they just like too much juice to it. It's a little violent. Our hydraulic top link. Um, it works pretty well, but there are a couple of naggy little issues with it. Um, number one, it's really jerky. So I've addressed that by, these are three eighths lines. I, I've gone and ordered some quarter inch lines and the smaller fittings and everything that go with them. That'll help, um, take some of the jerkiness out of it. Another issue I'm having is when it's extended and it goes up, I've got clearance problems around the slow moving vehicle sign and the, the underside of the body here. So what I'm going to do at the same time is I can relocate this sign a little bit. It can go up an inch and over to the left two inches and not obstruct lights or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I found this little hunk of metal I can use to reposition the sign. I just had to uh, cut one end of it off. I used a four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel to do that. And now we're going to clean it up a bit and drill a few holes. All right, we'll have to drill three holes in this. So I've laid them out and center punched them. And we'll go ahead and uh, drill. Now we have to file these two holes square because carriage bolts have to go through them. There's a bracket. I just kind of temporarily installed it to make sure it actually fits and the window still opens. There we go. And that, you can see, gives just a tiny bit more room for that cylinder to come up there. Um, it's a game of inches, that's for sure. It does cover the taillight a tiny bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Nice coat of black paint on there. and got her all bolted on, so let's put the sign on and see how it looks. Perfect. Window opens and closes. Lots of room for the top link. Good. 
Something I'm going to try to solve my clearance problem with all this stuff for the time being is I'm going to switch the pin in this. Um, this basically, there's a bolt through here and a spacer that just gives this little area a little bit of structure and support to keep that from, from bending and, and warping. I guess if people are out using this blade, you know, in the fields and they're hitting rocks and tree stumps and stuff, I'm just using it to push snow. So I'm going to give up a little of that strength for now and I'm going to switch these two things around and we'll see if that helps us at all. Well, that solved the problem. Everything is all the way up and nothing hits anything. So that's what we'll do. Um, we're going to change these to quarter inch lines and we should be all set. I don't even have to, um, I don't think I even have to reclock the, the cylinder. This is perfect. I left this thing overnight and when I came out this morning I found it like this. So we're definitely um, suffering from a bit of creep in the uh, directional control valve. So I'm going to have to go ahead and put a double pilot operated check valve on the on this cylinder here. I have one but it's got half inch ports and it's just really big so I'm going to go out and grab one with 3 8 ports and a couple of fittings and we'll get that put on there. Finally got in the parts so I could finish this hydraulic top link. This is what we were waiting for was this teeny weeny little double pilot operated check valve. It's going to fit right in there quite nicely. So we're going to see about getting that installed right now. So this end is pretty easy. It's going to go like that. A hex nipple and a, a port adapter from number six ORB to quarter pipe. So I'm going to at least get that together now. So far, so good. What I've got to do now is make a banjo fitting to go from here to there. Um, I would really like this to be a steel compression fitting, but... What do you know? Today we <laughs> went into lockdown number three. So um, I'm going to have to work with it. what I've got for now. All right, that's good. What I have to do next is I have to braise the pipe into the banjo. And then I have to make a tab. I want to tab this to the, the cylinder body. That'll make that a lot stronger and take a lot of the strain off of this thing if if it if it gets caught and maybe that little brass fitting will survive I didn't like the first conglomeration of fittings and stuff I had in here so I I uh, reinvented it of course I can't find exactly what it is I need so I have to make it and it's not really all that wise to be using brass fittings on hydraulic stuff but um, this brass stuff is good for 2000 PSI. This tractor doesn't run anywhere near that. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I, I'm going to make the one for this end and I'll, I'll show you how I make these banjos. So this is a hodgepodge of junk we found laying around. So the first thing I have to do is I have to bore out these banjo fittings. So the banjo bolts we need to use will go through it. Now it's not going to leave a ton of space for the oil to flow around, but that's all right. We don't want uh, it, this to move very fast anyway. So if it restricts it a little bit, that's fine by me. So first thing we're going to do is get that so that banjo bolt will go through there. So there's our first step. Now we need this 5 16 pipe coming out of it to be straight. And we're going to slide a piece of 3 8 pipe over top of it. That'll serve two purposes. Number one, it'll make it a little bit stronger. And number two, it'll bump it up to 3 8 so we can use 3 8 compression fitting um, screwed into the valve, which is also just that tiny bit stronger. Um, sometimes I cut these off and drill them out and start all over again, but just for um, a lark, I'm going to try and straighten this one. Next up, I've gone ahead and just from a piece of 3 8 steel tube, cut a little piece, it'll slide right over this 5 16 tube. And then we'll braise it on the end here. Now we just have to adjust the length of this when it's about, I don't know, uh, a quarter of an inch too long. So I'll nip a quarter of an inch off it and we'll see if the banjo bolt will go in. That's pretty good. Now what I have to do is I want to put a tab on here 
for the to hold this valve solid. Here's our little tab made. I'm just going to go ahead and tack it on. You have to be cra uh, careful. You don't do go too crazy welding these on because if it actually kind of penetrates through the wall and, and, and makes a mess on the inside of the bore, you're going to screw up your cylinder. Uh, we've also gone ahead and made sure that the, the, the ram is extended all the way so that the, the, the piston seals are nowhere near where we're welding. So we're going to go ahead and weld this thing now. Now we're going to drill down through here through our little bracket so we can put a nut and bolt to secure the valve. Now we can put this thing on for keeps. We've got to make sure we've got our seal washers on the bottom and the top of the banjos. We're going to put this thing together, put our bolt through, and then tighten everything up, and then we can put it on the tractor and see if it works. Before we put it on the tractor, I, one important step, I have to build up our new hoses. We went from 3 8 hoses to quarter. They're uh, a lot easier to manage, and they'll flow a little less. I've brought the Kubota down to the shop. Let's see if our uh, hydraulic top link fits and see how it works. Well, I got it on and hooked up. Now the moment of truth is to see if it leaks. Alrighty. Let's see how she works. Let's see if it leaks. Pretty darn good. Good. And the little bits of restriction and stuff in here has taken away a lot of the, um, the, the jerkiness of it. I could even go further and make little restrictor fittings that I could screw into these hoses and slow it down even more. And it may come to that. We'll see how it works when, it, when I'm using it in real life. But anyway, for now, I think this is good. Well, that all worked out awesome. So I could put this thing back to work now. Hopefully I won't need the snowblower and the plow till next winter, but hey, you never know. It is Canada. Um, I can remember cleaning snow on May 2-4 weekend before, so <laughs> I'm not taking these things off of here quite yet. Anyway, um, that's it for uh, today. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll come back uh, next time to see what we're doing here in the Claremont Classic Garage. Anyway, till then... This is Kevin checking out. Thanks and so long.